CV2 is out of beta. You can now save inventions, get others' inventions from the store, and it is enabled by default in every room, including every dorm room. So what better time to start a comprehensive tutorial series that aims to take you all the way from complete beginner to CV2 intermediate. Now this tutorial will assume that you have at least a basic understanding of the Maker Pen and how to navigate its menu and settings. So if you've never picked up a Maker Pen before, please watch a tutorial on that first. This tutorial will be all about building a sliding door. There's some useful basics that go into it that open up the way to making more advanced builds once you understand these principles properly. So without further ado, let's get on it. All right. Here, we have our door. So we go to a pallet, and we will see that CV2 has all their gadgets very neatly organized and with one another. This is what a CV2 piston looks like. Slap it on there. Um, I personally prefer to configure the control board and detach this from objects whenever anything moves, just so that it doesn't move along with the piston when it moves like this. So configure, detach from object, and now you can do with the piston whatever you want without the control panel moving along. I want the piston to be moving that way to open up the door and to wire it to it, wire the door to the little rod. Now I'd say this door is about one point something wide well, let's say 1.2 and that should be the control mechanism of our door cv2 when it enacts any physics or change on the game world requires an execution there are a few tools in rec room that easily allow you to get an execution you can see that if you spawn in a cv2 button above it you will end up with a control panel this one is wired up to activate when pressed, as indicated by the pressed wire coming out of its control board. Now, there's multiple executions on this thing, so here is one that doesn't activate when pressed, but on release instead. So when you're working with executions, make sure that you wire it up to the right output, depending on the behavior that you want out of your setup. Same for the toggle button. You can get one execution when pressed and get the other when released. A trigger volume will even allow you to see if it is an object that enters the trigger volume or a player. The one that we are going to be using is simply a trigger volume renamed with all of its settings except for the player entered removed for the sake of visual clarity. See, and there it is. This is a very simple little trigger volume that simply fires an execution whenever I touch it. So if I wire one to play and one to reverse, we can now essentially open and close the door. Now I would prefer to do this with one button, but the problem is if we use only one button, you would have to change the wire every time you want to change directions. And maybe you don't want to give everybody in your map a maker pen. There is one really useful chip in a CV2 chips called the if chip that can direct one execution in two different ways. So if we wire then to play and else to reverse and wire that up to our execution, you can use the wire tool to change this pin, which is a boolean value, which can either be true or false. By clicking, it will come true, come false. So if it's true, our execution will go through. If true, then it will play. Wire that again, so that it is false, and it will reverse. If it is already in that state, 
You see the door gets a bit weird, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. So how are we going to control this if chip? In comes the variable boolean. So this chip can hold a value. Because this is a variable boolean, it holds a boolean value. To show you what kind of value is inside of this, I have a little setup that can read that out, which is this. The input of the boolean can get an execution and then the inside will update to whatever you will give on its information variable input. So if I wire this boolean up to here, my text gadget should check whether the value inside is true or false. So if I wire an execution and I change this wire, this now says true, but you will see that this hasn't changed yet. This is because a variable needs an execution to update its value. So if I touch this, it will now update its variable to true because it got an execution and the true value is what it got as an input. So from that point on, it is outputting a true value. You will see once again, we make it false. This doesn't change until we give it an execution for the variable to update its value. Now, a really easy way to make a toggle setup out of this is to get yourself a NOT chip. And see, whenever this variable executes, update the value to the value that is not already in there. And you can see now that every time I give it an execution, it will update to the value that is not already in there. Because it will take this value, which is either, in this case, true, it will make that not true, which is false, and keep that at the ready for whenever an execution hits this variable. When the execution hits, it will update the variable to that value. So now it is false which in turn readies the variable for the other value. Now we already demonstrated how the if chip can change direction based on its condition. And any of these chips that have an execution input and output can generally continue their execution. So what we will do is we wire this execution so that every time it updates the variable it also sends an execution to the if chip and based on the condition of the if chip which is the condition in the variable the execution will either go up or go down so now when we fire because the value is true it will play and it will go forward and the value false, we'll send it backwards. So every time we press this execution, this variable will update itself to the value that is not already in there. Continue its execution towards the if chip that checks the condition. And then based on if this chip is true or false, it will either play or reverse. And here we have made our door with a single button. Now, another nice thing that you can do with this door is make yourself a second button so that the people on the other side of the door uh, can't be locked out when somebody lets them through on this side. So multiple executions can funnel into the same input. So now, no matter which door, which button I press, it will always toggle. So we put this button here, this button 
on the other side. So that no matter from which side you're coming, you can always open or close the door. A hey. Thank you for watching and being interested in CV2. If you can't wait to learn more, please follow the links in the description for info on how to work CV2 or to sign up to a workshop or class. Either way, I hope you use your newfound knowledge wisely and to see you in the next one. Bye! For those who are interested on what this looks like on the inside, Whenever the test event all the room loads, it will send a execution to cancel this delay loop, and after a delay run the delay loop again, this is to prevent any multiple delay loops running at the same time. It will say if the value on the display text equals the value that is being input, then do nothing. However, if this changes, then set the text to the new value and update the display text to the new value. This way, whenever the input that is being funneled into it is not the same as on the text, the execution will set the text to the new value. Oh, and this one? <laughs>